let us discuss the classes and objects so we've been discussing about the, the classes and objects so we know that you know if you can remember i said classes are general item and objects are specific item or special item okay and also the classes consist of the data members and the member functions whereas objects it it is basically a variable for a class isn't it and we can create a variable so the variable creation is nothing but an object for us okay so we can see that the diagram that is given here it clearly says that a student a class is called a student so every student has some common terms maybe every student has a name every student has a usn number every student is having some age and things like that isn't it but when you say an object so each student has a special details isn't it so if you look at this uh, look at this picture so it says that in this picture you can see that there is the student name is called ann so ann is a female and she is of some particular age old and she has a separate usn number and she belongs to a particular class isn't it the same way here if you look into it emily emily also of the having a name a special name emily and special characters of emily's are there so kathy but all are having the general titles student all are having general titles such as name na yuvasan age things like that okay so those specific or special details are called objects objects are basically derived from classes okay now next if you look into it now here also we have another example so cars can be of any model but all cars has some common properties so these common properties will be derived from the car class be derived from car class so the car class will have the common properties of all cars okay common properties of all cars so from the depends on the manufacturer the common property will be derived they will add some other special details to it so based on the details what they add it becomes either a ford car or a toyota car or it becomes a volkswagen car is it so these details already we have discussed in the previous uh, module and now we will move on to know how to specify a class and what are the contents of the class so class consists of two parts class consists of two parts so what are the parts first one is called a class declaration so we should write a class first then class function definitions class function definitions got it and also the class body contains the declaration of variables and functions class body contains declaration of variables and functions this variables only we generally call it as data members and functions interchangeably it can be called as methods or member functions okay so it is called a class members and now we will discuss how to declare a class the different types of uh, different parts of a class so how the class is written here so class a class name class class name then then here this one no this private and public we will discuss later so now if you look into it a class has so there are two parts are there in a class now it is as per this uh, the prototype so we have a private part and public part private part also has variable declarations public is also having a variable declarations so the start of the uh, class class is marked with a open brace whereas the end of the class is marked with a closed brace and terminated with a semicolon 
So class is a construct, class name is a user identifier, and private and public are basically a keyword that we use, but which will uh, we will discuss more detail about private and public in detail in the subsequent uh, uh, classes. Okay, now. Then you now we have studied one important concept called encapsulation, isn't it? Encapsulation means what? Wrapping the data and functions in one single entity, isn't it? To remember that that one capsule, medical capsule that we have seen, and I explained to you. So there are you know inside the capsule there are many chemicals will be there. You need not to know what are the chemicals present in. If it is required, you can make use of the capsule and just swallow it, and things will be set right, isn't it? So here is also the class is basically it provides a kind of an encapsulation. So the data hiding is automatically takes place inside a class. How it is taking place? Got it? So as we discussed in the previous slide, there are two sections inside a class, particularly for a class members. Okay. So the class members are member functions and data members. Okay. So now the private, when you say a private one, so the section, the private section can be accessed only from within the class. Can be accessed only from within the class. So that's basically a default one. So inside a class, you can make use of it. The particular data or a particular function, whatever you can make use of it. This is public, okay? You know, public, it can be accessed even from outside the class. It can be accessed. The data members, member functions uh, of a class can be accessed even from outside the class. And uh, this diagram clearly it depicts uh, the class and the data function in uh, um, uh, private area and public area. So you can see that each area consists of both data and member functions. Got it. So the private area, you can see that. Okay. So this is a private area and this is a public area. So there will be actually um, a kind of this thing will be there. I'll just show you how it is coming up. So here for private area, public area. Now you can see that when somebody wants some data member or any member function is trying to access a data. So let's say the X is a private data and which is need to access uh, a particular data or member functions from this private area, isn't it? So you can see that since it is enclosed into one module, it cannot be accessed. It cannot be accessed. Whereas the public area can see that the door is always open. So whenever you want to access a data, can access it, both the data and the member functions. Got it. And also you can see that we can access the private area of a class by using its public area. By using its public area. So first we're entering in the public area. Through public area, we can access the private area. These are advanced concepts that we will discuss in the subsequent uh, classes. Okay. So now you can see that the private area cannot be accessed from outside of the class. Whereas the private area can be accessed through the public data members and member functions of a class. Okay. So that's how basically it is constructed. So by default, what we are going to have is called a private. If you're not writing anything, it's going to be private. So making it explicitly public, then you, if, uh, if explicitly we have to write here, it's a public data. Okay, hope that you can understand. So what are the things we have discussed now? The classes. Classes has two sections. That is uh, data members and member functions. Two parts, the way data members and member functions. And also the classes can have two sections. One is called private section. Another one is called a public section. Isn't it? Okay. Then a simple class example that we can see here. Now here it is a class. Okay, class is a construct. And item is a name of a class that user identify. User can give any name here. Then also you can see that here, what do you have? You have two data members. Okay, so data member is called a number. It is going to carry an integer type values. Then cost is a another data member. 
which is a float which can have a decimal number now can tell me which section does it belong to yes since we are not specified anything it belongs to the private by default okay so these two data members are generally it's going to be private now now what do you have here the so public section okay so generally the member functions of a class will be declared as a public whereas data members will be maintained as private got it and also you can see that so the data private data members of a class is accessed through the what the public member functions that we will discuss in detail so now here you can see that uh, see there are different types of functions you can write either you can write the functions inside a class a complete function can be written inside the class or you can what you can write you can write the functions outside the class and we can just write only the prototype here only a prototype so here we can look into it there is a function called get data which is having only the prototype inside the class whereas the function is declared outside the class so why the get data now prototype gives the some detail get data as a function it takes two arguments and it's need not returning any value void void means not returning any value then put data as a member function neither takes an argument nor returns a value so this is the prototype that we have used here okay that's how basically a class is defined a class is defined here so as i told you the data members are generally it will be declared as private okay and the member functions will be a public one Will be public okay now how to create an object yes we have declared a class we got to know what is the what is there in a class and every other detail now how to create an object so the objects can be created the objects can be created by declaring a variable so once a class has been declared we can create variables of that type by using the class name by using the class name so declaration of an object is similar to that of a variable of any basic type as i told you earlier itself so just like any other variable you create in uh, data type no for creating variable for any other data type the same way for a, a, a class we create an, a variable that variable is called object that variable called a, called an object okay so you can see that here how it is created so in the previous slide we have discussed what item is a class name and a variable is declared now it's a becoming a data type here and here for this no for this what do we do item is a class name and a variable is created here now x is an object x is an object so how do you how do you visualize this you can see that this x is an object got it so this x will have the data members what are the data members we have seen we have seen the data members as we look at the previous slide number and cost number and cost so now the x is an another data type another uh, object now this will have a data type called number okay i'm just writing in a short form number and also it will have an another data member called cost another data member called cost so these two are going to be the data members got it and also it will have a member function so i am not specifying the member function here because generally uh, the, when the memory area is created it will going to be created only for once for the member functions of a class got it so it will have you no know, right away the connection to the class you look at this item you no know? it's a class called what item isn't it so this item now if you look into it item is a class item is a class it has a de member data members what are the data members it's going to have the data members called num number right number and also it's going to have a data members called cost number and cost okay that's done next what will be the there are member functions right the member what are the member functions we have the member function called get data isn't it there is a member function called get data 
and also you have the member function called put data isn't it so get data and put data put data okay get and data and put data so this is the data members and this part is going to be the functions this part is going to be the functions okay functions so now when the member function is going to be used it will going to be straight away taken from the class and it's going to be made use okay so see this this num and cost will not have any value whereas we can set a different value for the num and cost when i say the number is 100 it's going to be 100 okay when the cost is let us say it is 10.5 5 rupees it will be 10.5 rupees like that an object will be created now if you look into it if you want to create multiple objects also you can do it how do you do it by just separating the variable names by commas so now this is for x similarly you will have an another object called y okay y but what will be there inside the y the same thing will be there you will be having the numbers will be there and also what you'll be having you'll be having a cost you'll be having a cost so the number will can can be now let's say it's going to be 50 number is going to be 50 and cost is going to be now let me say 1.5 rupees something like this now you can see that same object only the same class only from the same class we have derived two different objects this object is called a x in the for the x also the same data members are there okay but here in the x the data member a num value is 100 whereas in the cost the value is 10.5 similarly if you look into it you can create an another object here now here also it's going to have the same data members but what's happened here you can see that the number is having a value 50 cost is having 1.5 so each object can have different types of uh, different values okay and also you can create an object in this way as, as soon as you write the class huh? as soon as you terminate the class you can write the number of um, objects that's required and you can terminate it with semicolon this is also fine you can follow any method here no issues now accessing the class members how to access the class members that we will discuss now so you want to access the class members we will access through the member functions only as we discussed earlier because the class members uh, data numbers are generally it's going to be a uh, private one got it so the uh, member functions are going to be a public one so what do we do we write here object name okay object name is what the object name that we have created then function name okay then within bracket we specify the list of arguments list of arguments so for an example the function called statement goes like this you know the previous slide we have discussed, you know, we have discussed about the creation of objects so we have created an object called x then through x now x having an access to the get data of a class okay so get data is a member function of a class get data is a member function of a class and if you look into it the get data if you look into it here and as we discussed here the get data is having two get data is having two variables isn't it one is float other one is integer first one is going to be integer and second one is going to be a float okay second one is going to be float so now so first what we'll do we pass the integer value second we have passed the float value isn't it so with this requirement we need pass a value into the um, function so the get data of a class item will get executed and depends on the arrangement that we have done with the x uh, object the data will be captured if it's going to return a, any data values but here you can look into it the get data member function does not return any data type at all isn't it 
so a member function can be invoked only by using an object so we want to make use of the uh, member function of a, a class it must be used through an object only through an object only so a data member can be accessed only through a member function and not by object directly directly you cannot object uh, you cannot you cannot access the data member because it becomes it's a private one the data members are private one plus member functions are public one so through the public functions we can access the private data members okay that's how it's basically and the communication between objects are implemented uh, through the member functions only so using the member functions only we can uh, communicate between the objects and classes now another example that we can see here so here we have a variable declared as public and can be accessed by objects directly if the variables are declared as object private when so public you can see that here we have this is a private section by default it's going to be a but it's it will be in a private section that i'll write as pvt private section and in a public section you have an another variable int z int z now we can see that here an object is created what is the class name it's an xyz so by using a similarly class name and uh, used here and an object called a p is created okay now you can see that through the object we can access the data and the class isn't it but here you can see that a p is a object that is created and x is basically a data member isn't it that it is intent to give the value of zero but when you do that it will throw an error to throw an error because x is a because x is a private one it cannot access whereas the z can be easily accessed because z is a public so p dot z is equal to 10 can be easily assigned here isn't it because it is z is public and it is well accepted here well accepted here okay now the member functions the member functions can be defined in two places so we can declare either outside the class or we declare inside the class that already i have told you when you declare a member function outside the class when you declare a member function outside the class what do we do we use a a scope resolution operator okay we use a scope resolution operator and as usual we'll be having a function name and very importantly we will specify you no know, this class name so this function is associated with the class this particular class okay so using the scope resolution operator this connection is done although the function presents outside the class so it can be connected by using the uh, scope resolution operator okay so then you have some argumented declaration then you can if you have any written data type you can write it then you can write your function body and that you can you can close your functions okay now uh, a simple example is given here you can see that item is the class name isn't it and get data was the member function for us and it has two variables and inside this what happened we have written a value a is given to the number b is given to the cost so number is basically a private data member of a class in the previous syntax and examples if you look into it we'll get to know the number is basically a class number is a data member private data member of a class and whereas cost is also a private data member of a class so we are getting the values for the number and the cost through the get data function by using two input arguments similarly you can see that put data it is a put data put data is also declared outside the class so how it is basically it's going to be um, connected by using the scope resolution operator okay so now here so the number and the cost are basically the private data member isn't it so what we can do we can access through the data member function public member function so the number is number cost is going to be a cost something like this it will be written so this will help us to print the value of the number that is given here 
and value of the cars that is taken through the B arguments to the cost variable. So that's how basically we use the member function, private uh, for a public member function to initialize the values of private uh, member function, private data members, private data members. So the member function can be declared inside the class definition also. So inside the class definition, when you write here, what we have to do, when you write inside the class definition, you have to specify the member functions as public. Member functions as public. Okay, so now here you can see that here, you can have a private data member. These are private data member. Number and cost are private data members. Whereas the data members are declared as public, isn't it? And also you can see that, uh, see this get data, it's declared outside the class. Okay, it's declared outside the class. Whereas the put data, you can see that it's declared inside the class now. So it depends on that, however we want, no? However we want, we can specify the, the position or the place of a member function. Either you want to declare inside the class or outside the class, both will have the same detail. But only the requirement is if it is present inside the class, it should be as small as possible, got it? Because it should not, otherwise the class will become large, okay? So in order to avoid that, what we can do, we can keep always the larger member functions outside the class and the only the small member functions, you know, which will execute soon and which has less number of uh, uh, statements, only those state of functions can be kept inside the class. So when you declare a class outside the, when you declare a member functions outside a class, what do we need to do? We need to uh, connect it via scope resolution operator, which we had discussed earlier, isn't it? So when a function is designed, defined inside a class, it is treated as inline function. Hope you understand what we studied about inline function. What is inline function? So we, uh, in order to reduce the overhead that is occurred by, that is caused by the um, general functions, Okay, so we use inline functions. In the inline functions, we represent the keyword inline. So that ensures that when the function call statement is given, immediately the function also gets executed without any overheads and gets the value immediately. Okay, that's how basically then inline function uh, works, isn't it? Or else if you can, you can watch this inline function video and you can uh, get you yourself understand. Okay, now we'll just see a C++ program with class, okay, with class. So now here, if you look into it, um, a simple example that we will discuss here. You can see that we have declared a header file and an ANSI C++ construct. Now a class is declared called item and uh, the previously, whatever we discussed, basically the uh, parts of this particular uh, program only, but now it's going to be a complete program. So class item, it's having an integer uh, data member called number and float data member called it the cost. So since we are not specified anything, it's going to be private by default. Then there is a member function defined here called put data, which is present inside the class itself, isn't it? So number and cost values, whatever of the, it's going to take the value without number will be displayed here. And also you can see that a get data is the member function which is defined outside the class. And when it's declared outside the class, how it should be represented? By using the scope resolution operator and a class name, and a class name, isn't it? Okay, so that's how basically we get it done. And now once we define the class, when we define the member function, we also have to write a prototype, isn't it? So you can see the prototype, the get data as a member function and having two arguments, not returning any value. The same thing, we just write it here as a prototype, okay? So the part of the member, get member function, no, get data function, what it does? Through A, it gives, it takes the value and give it to the number. Through B, it gives to the cost. So put data will, uh, display these values of numbers and cost. Now we have a main program, okay? So in the main program, what is done here? We have declared a variable called x, 
okay so now the see out statement will just print on the screen object x object x then um, what we do so we pass the value to the member for uh, data members of a class through a member function so get data is invoked then 100 is for a uh, numbers and 299.95 is for cost the value is passed here then put data will display the value similarly you can see that here so item y is declared and the y is in another object so y object y will be specified on the screen and we get the member function and now the number in y will get the value 100 the cost in y will get the value 175.50 okay then similarly put data will display the value on the screen will display the value on the screen got it so now this as i discussed earlier this is an x object this is an x object and again what are going to have you're going to have a y object you're going to have a y object x object is also having the data members what are the data members it's going to have the data members called a number and a cost similarly this also will have the data member number and cost so in this the number will be how much 100 in this the number will be 100 okay whereas here the number will be how much 299.5 299.5 whereas in this if you look into it this will be having the number 200 200 and whereas the cost of this function will be 175.50 okay you can see that objects are same sorry uh, the class is same the objects are different so by using the class and the object concepts we can specify different types of objects and we can write the program as per our requirement because it is an object oriented programming okay thank you